Paltrow, Oscar Award winning actress, face of brands like Estee Lauder, owner of Goop, but most commonly known as the woman that promoted putting a jag egg up your whoop that I cannot say in the first minute of a YouTube video, otherwise I will get demonetized. She recently went viral when a clip of her from a podcast talking about her diet, where it appears she lives off broth and a couple vegetables. First I was horrified and disgusted, but then shock set in. Have you seen this woman? She is glowing. If she was living off broth and vegetables, she would turn to dust. Something's not adding up. I'm someone that loves a good wellness hack and something I love even more is debunking fitness health trend clickbait titles on the internet. So I'm gonna take it upon myself to do Gwyneth Paltrow's whole daily wellness routine to see if it is indeed toxic or iconic. Celery juice. I, I honestly expected Gwyneth to be a bit more original. Like, this has been overdone. Celery juice and lemon water. And I found celery lemon juice. So let's try this. First thing. Oh, she's hefty. <laughs> Why did I say that? Oh, it's kind of spicy. This is quite lovely. I wake up parched. Is there anything magical? No, it's just some celery and lemon in your water. A little nutrients. Cool. Oh, that did not foam. It was my first time trying macadamia nut milk. Uh, doesn't foam. <laughs> Sad. So I'm gonna sit here, enjoy my not frothy coffee. Then for breakfast, she doesn't have breakfast. This is most like basic wellness girly intro. Intermittent fasting celery juice. Is an example of number one of where she gets hatred, the fasting. But I have some hot takes about that, but we'll address that later on when we actually eat food. It's nice, but there's like way better things I could spend $8 on. Way better. Now workout. She does an hour movement in the morning, walk, Pilates, or like every basic LA mom, Tracy Anderson. I've got tea about that. Because I don't live in sunny LA. I got it. Bundle up for the elements. <sighs> infrared sauna. Gwyneth does infrared sauna every morning. I don't have access to infrared sauna, but I'm using this infrared sauna blanket. I'm personally a little torn on the infrared. I'm a big sauna component. The infrared, it's mixed emotions. I'm really interested in it for like skin benefits. They're detoxing over oh, and talk about detoxing. I was supposed to do 20 minutes meditation and I realized I forgot it. She does 20 minutes meditation every day. So I'm gonna sit and meditate in here and I feel I should be doing this more often. It feels way too luxurious on a work day. Like I got shit to do and I'm sitting here. It's nice though. Also props to everyone who called me out for not doing the NSDR protocol in the Edgy Burn video. I've done every wellness challenge but meditation and you have all caught on. Have I been avoiding it? Yes. Do I think it's beneficial? Yes. Do I refuse to do it? Yeah. I will eventually do it. I've just put it off for five years. So yeah, here's me meditating. And by meditating, I mean I'm talking to a camera. <laughs> Did she dry brushes in the sauna? But I don't have a sauna. Imagine me trying to dry brush in my sauna. <laughs> actually have the goop dry brush. I've had this for two years. It's great, but I love dry brushing. People talk about it getting rid of <clears throat> cellulite, lymphatic drainage. I don't know, but where it does shine is that it exfoliates the dead skin. I've been cursed with red splotchy skin, but I've been blessed with not too much cellulite. But if I let my dry skin build up, it looks like cellulite. But if I'm just dry brushing, it takes away the dry skin, gets rid of my KP, and reduces the look of cellulite. I love it. Do I have time in the morning? No. So it's around 10 o'clock when it doesn't eat till about 11 or 12, so I'm currently fasting. And this is something that kind of ticks me off. Andrew Huberman says he's fasting in the morning. No one's upset. For science, longevity. Gwyneth says it. Restrictive, toxic. 
diet culture. And I get it. Us women, we've been dealt a lot of shit and we are constantly fed dieting. So when we see it, we want to attack because we're angry. But we can't assume every single time someone just mentions they're not eating at this very second doesn't mean it's inherently toxic. Lunch. Now, I don't blame the internet. I think this is what we're visualizing Gwyneth is having. Just a simple, plain bowl of soup. Or she's pulling the ultimate almond mom move and just sipping on bone broth for lunch. Which I love the bone broth. Great collagen, it's good for you. But like, it's a side, it's a beverage. It's not a meal. Option one, she just had what first came to mind, a really plain bowl of soup. Or option two. says they're having soup for lunch. It could be a soup topped with nuts, a lot of cheese, drizzled in olive oil. She says bone broth. It's on the side. She's sipping it with a bunch of paleo crackers and bread on the side. Like when I order soup, this is what I'm thinking. So maybe she's just casually said soup. This is paleo bread, which is everything I'm against. Whatever the opposite of gluten intolerance is, is what I am. I love gluten. I love sourdough. I realize that's a flex in modern day society and avocado would kill me. So, you know, we all have our, our problems. I would imagine her eating this like fancy paleo bread from the Himalayans with ghee, from cows that were fed gold-plated grass. What I would imagine hers is like. Um, versus when we think just soup, we think Campbell's. It's just a bowl of Campbell's soup. Avoiding trying this, I don't... It just smells off. It's okay. It's a little sandy. The inside kind of tastes like egg. It's given crunchy egg. She could sadly just be eating blood and vegetables. And if that's the case, I'm sorry, Gwyneth. And then this is what men think when they hear Gwyneth Paltrow. What is the first thing that comes to mind when I say Gwyneth Paltrow? Apple handles. Iron Man. It's like a mimosa. I guess the part that I'm just kind of like, ah, you know Gwyneth, she's running a business. She seems flourishing. She's going skiing with her family. Is that an inappropriate joke? And she does seem to have like a youthful energy. Debaucherous. And that doesn't give almond mom. Almond mom is like, you have one arm and you're dragging your feet and you're cranky and you're mad at everything. You're yelling at the cashier because you're okay, one. Guys, listen to this theory. Almond mom, hangry, rips off head of cashier for absolutely no reason. Karen. Are Karen's just hangry almond moms? I just saw society, it all makes sense now. Our mothers are raised on almonds and they're hungry and they became Karens and that makes sense. This next part, I have no idea. She said on the podcast, she has binders. <music> McGill University, if you didn't know McGill University, it's kind of like the Harvard of Canada. You don't need a binder in your detox kit and you don't need a detox kit. <laughs> According to McGill, Detox regimes already misguided are now incomplete without the purchase of a latest novelty, a binder. An Austrian dermatologist. Now he noticed when he was trying to detoxify, detoxify people, there was always negative things would happen. I think it's just common. Anytime someone does a juice cleanse, they're talking about headaches. You feel you need to throw up. And people always say, no need to worry. That That's your body detoxifying. That's all the chemicals coming out. And I guess binders are the idea that they will bind to these, these toxins when they come out and help eliminate them from their body without touching your body. I hope the absurdity of that kicked in. And also, I f always found that so funny. Juice cleanse, what do they lack? Sodium. What happens when you don't have enough sodium in your diet? Headaches, nausea. So I often think these detoxing symptoms you feel are just not giving your body enough nutrients. Take home message, binders are natural substances like clay and charcoal that the wellness industry is selling, claiming that they bind to toxins during a cleanse to prevent you from feeling ill and stopping the body from reabsorbing toxins. Gwyneth, please stop saying detox. I think everyone would be on board. And, and but I'm gonna play devil's advocate, okay? There is sometimes an abundance of not too good things in our diet. There is pollution in the environment. There could be stuff in our water. Naturally, your body 
will eliminate them out. They know your body would do it on its own, but let's have it more efficient. Let's give yourself the nutrients your body's optimizing. Okay, okay, um, we need a new word. We need a new word because there's a lot of things that people just say, just people just stamp detox with no idea what that means. Instead of just being like, things that might help optimize your body's natural processing. Because most of these people selling detoxes aren't doctors and those are the only people who can actually help you if you're poisoned with the toxin. What they're trying to say, I think the wellness industry, why they need another word, is they're trying to say supplements optimize your body. Omega-3s help your skin. Your skin protects you from toxins outside. Taking enough nutrients optimizes your lung and liver capacity. So we need a new word that's just saying optimizing certain organs. <laughs> that may help detoxify. Because if you actually need to detoxify, go to the doctor. Okay, you want to see, see that? It's kind of like, okay, it's not a miracle cure, but it's just, I've got extra income, I'm a millionaire. I can spend it to be like 100% optimal, knowing I'll piss a lot of it out because I've got money to piss away. Versus us, regular folk, who are just trying to put enough food on the table. That is one of them. She's got the extra money and that's who she caters towards. Ketones. I, so I saw in the podcast, she has ketones midday. I don't, Something about this feels illegal. Ooh! That's sweet. Ketone update. I feel really lightheaded. Like, this could be complete placebo. I, I don't like this feeling. Jittery. Our post ketones. They made me feel like I drank on an empty stomach. It was kind of fun. I was very not productive. Had to go on a walk. Do not recommend. Unless you kind of want a good time in the middle of the day. It's socially acceptable or not. Mike brought up a good point. I should probably do it before a workout, not just <laughs> randomly in the middle of the day while I'm doing computer work. New extreme sport. Take pre-workout before accounting. <laughs> So I looked up uh, Gwyneth's diet online and then Goop, she did mention that she has lunch and she has dinner, but then there's always snacks around Goop Kitchen like salted cashews, which we always have. Honestly, if it was just me, I'd be sitting in the macadamia nuts and the pecans first because those are a superior nut. Um, but for Gwyneth, I'll eat cashews. Have you seen Goop's Kitchen? Their food looks so good. I bet you that's why. She's probably snacking all day too. I think that's often not talked about. When we talk about these diets, these celebrities are on. It's like, yeah, these are their meals, but like, you don't tell me you're, you're walking by and you're not doing that too. For supplements in the podcast, she mentioned too. She mentioned NAD, which I've heard so much science about and I'm very intrigued by it, but it is hella expensive. Sirens, shh. Can you appreciate you saving someone's life? We appreciate you. Thank you, first responders. But shut up. <laughs> Out of my price range for this video. But she did mention she takes AG1. This would be a perfect ad read moment, but it's not. I just genuinely drink it every day. It's great. I was about to go into ad read, but they're not paying me in this video. I'm just gonna say I love it and I will drink it and I will promote it, even when I'm not getting paid. But they will not get an ad read out of me because you gotta pay the big bucks to hear 75 whole food dinner. On the podcast, the clips that went viral said she pretty much just eats vegetables for dinner. So this is what we're all envisioning. Just, they're all beautiful, but just some chicken and vegetables. I'd be so hungry if this is all I have for dinner. Option one, what we're all thinking, she means. Option two, you know, once again, she's paleo. I'm sorry, Mexicans, this is probably a sin and I would normally not do this, but some delicious mayo, chicken, slaw tacos. And also when I say tacos, I'm implying that I'm having chips and salsa. She's probably having guac, but once again, wood candy, avocado, algae. I just remembered something. Problem why I will never go paleo is like 99% of paleo is avocado. Um, and I got these paleo chips. Think about this, oh no. Casa blend, avocado oil, coconut, chia seeds, so I can't eat these. Does anyone want to Looks taste like them? I'll be taking right? those, <laughs> thank you. Will you please tell us how the paleo chips are? I'm gonna try the chips blend. Oh, no. It's a lot lighter than a corn tortilla chip. It kind of like falls apart in your mouth. The salsa? But 
It'll pass, but corn tortilla chips are better. If a Tostito is a five out of 10, where does that rank? 3.5. Okay, there we go. Hello, mint. Try my taco. It's kind of like a corn tortilla. It's all right. Now, personally, if I was just eating a couple tacos, some chips, and the soup and bread, that wouldn't be enough for me. She's not as active as me. That might be enough for her. I don't know. We'll never know. That's the same with the internet. We don't know how much she's eating. She'd be eating six tacos, a bag of chips, or she'd be eating a taco, no chips. But confession, I didn't make these tacos. I got them from Taco Fino and just put them in there, and it comes with this crispy rice, and this is the best thing in Vancouver. So this is what I'm gonna eat for dinner. <laughs> is this cheating? <laughs> Now, Gwyneth is another shockingly polarizing figure online. And I was asking myself why, and then I was like, ah, nepotism. Nepo babies. Nepotism babies. The Nepo babies. Paltrow, Allison Williams. And this is something that never crossed my radar up until a year ago. I don't know, I just was like, oh yeah, some people are born rich, cool, lucky, must be nice. And I never realized why there was such a hatred. So many people start at different places. There is racial inequality. There is social inequality. And so many people start behind the line. I know for myself, I didn't come from wealth. I came from a family with a lot of addiction. I didn't grow up in a place like LA. I didn't even realize acting could be an option, let alone having someone having an in in the industry to get me that job. But then I'm also aware that I'm a skinny white blonde and I definitely did get many advantages getting into bars and things like that. And I got a job when I was 18 working at Abercrombie. I'm, I'm still to this day embarrassed. And I think the pain people have towards nepotism babies is here's the starting line, we should all start at the same place and however hard you wanna work, take it. But the reality is some people start way behind the line. People are like, wanna start way in front of the line. And I get that anger. Cause when you start behind, you see the people start ahead and you're like, why, why can't I just have the extra you had so I'm at least at the starting, same starting point and then we go and be on our merits. And so I get that that's gotta be furiating. And now for Gwen's weirdest wellness hack, I will take ozone therapy rectally. Ah! <laughs> I just want to see your response. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but the YouTube does not pay me enough for that, so I will not be doing that. Confession, I used to be Gwyneth's number one hater. In my opinion, she was the guru selling snake oil, unscientific based things, promising women detoxes, and just everything that's wrong with the fitness industry was the top of it. Until I watched her Netflix show, and yes, there was a lot of hogwash on there, but I realized she's in on the joke. That's when my whole mind changed. It's like she realizes the absurdity, but she's out here being like, hey, I got the money, let's see if this works. And she's almost a guinea pig. Try whatever it takes. She's got the disposable income and she's gonna test these things. She's not talking to the average person. She's talking to the rich LA moms that got disposable money that want to spend a thousand dollars in supplement that can do that. And us sitting here being like, why the hell would you buy that? And it's because they bought in everything else. And now I kind of give her props. There's been a couple things she's tested and talked about that we all made fun of later on turn out to be kind of true. Things like meditation that you, we used to make fun of. And now we're like, oh no, that's scientifically proven and really good for your mental health. And other times she's severely clickbaited. Another thing she's known for is the vagina steaming. Turns out she never actually promoted vagina steaming. She just promoted 10 spas in LA in one Goop article. And one of those spas happened to do vagina steaming. And then some article wrote about it and then it blew up everywhere. And now she's just known as the crazy vagina lady. And it makes sense because she uses these clickbait titles to get more clicks to grow her business, it's worked for her, so why would she stop doing that? But that's also why she gets this bad rap of being an almond detox mom. And I don't have the answer. You gotta take her with a grain of salt. But I think she takes herself with a grain of salt. I think she realizes- I don't think I need to shove a jade egg up my new huh? All of the health and wellness things aside, something I do have to really thank Gwyneth for. Her being one of the first people, not the very first, but just in that realm of talking about women's sexuality and making it chic and cool and not taboo because that's been such a taboo subject for so many years. I think that's something that's become so normalized and she was talking about it before it was normal. Gwyneth gets my stamp approval for that. Was this toxic? Was this iconic? I don't know because the reality is she could be eating next to nothing and if she is, well, that's really sad and please stop, please feel yourself, but she looks like she's radiating. Also, she has so much at her disposal. She has the goop kitchen. She can hire a chef. I learned this when I did the Tom Brady challenge of when they say, oh, I had some like chicken and vegetables. We think a plate of chicken and a side of asparagus. They're talking some duck confit 
asparagus shipped in from France and olive oil drizzle and cream cheese from cashews and sprinkled with balsamic reduction a real meal they've got the disposable income to make vegetables and protein luxurious and that is why people hate her because that's the privilege but I kind of in the tour and I'm like ah, I like the Kardashians it's out of touch a lot of the time but that's why I love watching. That's why I love reading Goof sometimes. I'm like, that's so out of touch. I, I want to know what they actually do. Because don't tell me they're just like us. They're not. And that's why it's so entertaining to see. She's testing things and sometimes they turn out to be good and sometimes they are hogwash. And a lot of times it's out of our price range. Maybe, maybe that's the solution. She put some more like affordable options on Goop. But then I guess that's the point of Goop. Like Chanel's gotta be Chanel. Why well, don't buy Chanel bags? But if you like this video enough, maybe this video will make enough for a Chanel bag. Probably not, but you know, here's hoping. We solved the almond mom, we solved the carrot. Let's stop using the term detox for everything. Have a great day, go pet dog. Love you guys, bye. Also, I don't know why <laughs> the ketones. <laughs>